So hi, I hope everyone is having a really great afternoon. So I currently work at Automatic, which is a company behind WordPress.com, amongst other things. And I have this thread of psychology running through my life, studies, and career. And code psychology really, really excites me. And I love doing experiments. And I love trying to work out how we can actually create experiences that connect with others. That really, really drives me. So emotion is a really, really powerful thing. It drives us to actions. It makes us feel connected. And kind of it's an essential part of being human. In one day, we can laugh, we can cry, and we can sigh. And our range of emotions is incredible. Our face and body show these, despite quite often trying to hide them. We also have this desire to associate emotions to inanimate objects, and it's something we all do. So my laptop, for example. If it's not booting, it's sad, it's feeling grumpy, I associate those emotions with it. And if it works as expected, it's happy, it's having a great day. And that's part of the nature as humans. We expect things to have emotions. And we almost demand it, because without it, we kind of feel a little bit uneasy. And Pixar actually recognized this in their first official short film called Luxo Jr. And in this film, there's a little lamp which plays while the big lamp looks on. It's kind of a father and son short in the form of lamps. And animals feel emotions too. For example, look at the sheer joy of this dog running. We get comfort in this kind of cycle of emotions. So we recognize joy, and then that feeds back into our joy. And this is Pepper. So Pepper actually is a humanoid robot designed to live with humans, but it's not task-based. Pepper actually is a social robot designed to live autonomously and to converse, recognize, and react to your emotions. And beyond being super, super cute, Pepper actually is an illustration of how we connect through emotion. An emotional companion is actually our perfect fit. And because I like robots, I'd like to share another one with you today. And this is Paro. This is actually a therapeutic robot baby harp seal. And this is designed by intention to be cute. And it's to have a calming effect and emotional response in patients of hospitals and nursing homes. So it's kind of the animal version of, uh, the kind of robot version of animal-assisted therapy. Paro actually has tactile sensors across its body that respond to petting. And it can stimulate such emotions as surprise, happiness, and anger. And it also has sounds similar to the baby harp seal, as well as a sleep and awake cycle. So we connect with it. Humans need, we need emotional responses, that connection. I kind of think we're a little bit like the primate needing a hug. The world is a scary place, and we need that connection. We have a range of emotions, and by understanding emotions in others, we then relate to them. So emotions actually are the feelings of the mind, just like physiological sensations. An emotion actually has three components. These are physiological changes, such as increased heart rate, behavioral response, such as whether you stay or escape, and a subjective experience, like feeling angry, happy, or sad. And the latter is normally what we associate with being an emotion. Animation has for years touched the heart of us, from Pixar to Studio Ghibli. We've fallen in love with characters, had our heart broken by ink and computer-generated images. Animation connects on a level that touches the very human heart of us. We dive into those animated worlds, and we often escape into them as well. Studio Ghibli, to me, show mastery in each of their films as far as bringing a sense of delight goes. This is actually an advert they did. So this cat we can relate to because it's beyond cute, right? There's a sense of delight in its playful batting of the butterfly. It's delightful to watch, and it fills you with joy. 
Well, this is a complete contrast. The web has never been very good at relating to us as a human. Interactions are often cold, clin clinical, because it's not actually a Pixar film. And it has in the past felt like the web was created for robots rather than humans. When you only have an interface, how do you actually show emotion? Animation takes advantage of facial features because robots even have them, right? We show our emotion on our faces. But what happens when you have no face? So anime and manga actually have a unique visual language that conveys character emotion. And these range from speed lines to crying, and something actually called cat mouths. It's a bit of an aside, but I'd like to share this with you. A cat mouth is actually when a mouth grows fangs and looks like a cat. And what it means is the character is feeling catty. So it adds another element beyond the facial expression to the animation and to our understanding of the character. So a lot of you probably know the book by Disney called The Illusion of Life, Disney Animation. And in that, it set 12 basic principles of animation. And these kind of create an illusion that the object adheres to the laws of physics, but it actually goes beyond that to emotional timing and character appeal. And I feel when dealing with emotion, we can probably deal this, kind of reduce the 12 down to four. And those I'd like to share today. So the first of these would be anticipation. Anticipation prepares for an action. This also focuses attention on an object. This could be really useful to show a start of an emotional response or a resting emotion. And then we have timing, and this is critical for conveying emotions. And different emotions have different times as well. It really can convey the character's personality. And then we have exaggeration. This is a little bit of a double-edged sword, because it can be a technique that's actually overused. But where emotion is concerned, some are actually exaggerated. And this is one that you can really play around with when creating emotion in a static element. And then you have appeal, which is essential for emotion. We have to find something appealing. So this is kind of, if you ever played uh, kind of D&D, this was your charisma kind of amount in that. So we have less of this then you wouldn't sympathize. So in Disney terms, this would be kind of the villain. You wouldn't want to sympathize with the villain. And this is also seen as a captivation of a character. So emotional experiences connect with the user. They bring moments of delight. An interface can touch you as you interact with it. And when you do that, you actually create a meaningful in connection. And that's priceless. This is how your users become really, really engaged. They create feelings with your interface, and in a sort of way, they kind of bond with it. As a result, their investment increases as they use it. So when thinking about emotion, I really think you can learn a lot from apps, and I'd like to share a few today. So this is Katina, and in this, this little face, look at them as you kind of interact, their eyes, and you get that kind of feedback. You relate, and you get that kind of interaction. A Monument Valley, I think, can teach an awful lot about atmosphere and every single interaction layering up to create an emotional response and a feeling of the world. And Up Coffee shows emotion as it adds up, so it kind of gets more and more, and then it's kind of this woohoo, kind of as it fills up. It's so excited to be full. And I couldn't not show Flappy Bird, because a Flappy Bird, to me, shows personality right from the start. So, kind of on load, the little character's ready to go, and to die horribly, but it's ready to go. And then it refreshes again, ready to go and die horribly again. So we have this ability to create the same animated emotion in CSS. CSS animation is really exciting to me, and it, the potential is thrilling. And there were tons of experiments like this amazing dozing bird. But what about the bigger view? What about creating an entire experience in CSS? The sites we create, we should see as a chance to move the user. 
Maybe it's for a reason, like this site, which we're going to, it's rather app showing this. We're going to have the demo from this tonight. What reason touching someone on an emotional level is powerful? In the past, if you wanted to connect with someone with the same power animation does, you'd use flash or video. This is moving. It is making a real connection with the human as you use it. And this site shows how a simple button connects you with the rest of the animation on the site. I think if this button had a noise, it would kind of be bedoying, because that's what this button does as you interact with it. And it adds to the character and the feel of the site unites with those UI elements to create the entire experience. And knowing the voice of your site and the brand is really, really a foundation to know what to kind of emotion you want to evoke. And it sets your emotional tone. If you think back to Monument Valley, how everything layers up to create that emotional tone. And those examples are great, but they're big. They're showcases as what an entire animated experience can be. And some are just experiments to test the boundaries of this relatively new format. What about smaller interactions? How can we bring a sense of delight to those? So animation isn't just for code pens or fancy animation flourishes. We should be adding it to even the smallest of our UI, but how do we take those exaggerations into smaller forms? So like all the examples before, when animation that designs for motion is thought of, it tends to be in the sense of that entire experience, the lead role. But these large experiences are incredible. But look at this, how Slack uses the emoji picker, that tiny little interaction that you make a connection with that. It doesn't have to be big. And CoPen, I'm not going to play. This is quite a long animation. However, the CoPen button is a great attention grabber because it has different levels. So there's initial kind of wobble, and then it kind of gets more. And then if you really don't notice that, it sends a notification box in. So to me, the personality of this is it kind of tries to kind of make a little cough, tries to get your attention, then it kind of shouts a bit, and then it gives up and calls its mate notification box in. And here's Copen again. I had to share this because Copen just has some really nice tiny flourishes. This heart on load, there's a kind of pulse. And then when you click it, it's kind of like you give your heart away. That's a really powerful and simple thing to do as you like something. And what's better than having toggles? Kitty toggles. I love this because it actually shows how you can simply add to previously boring standard interface something really fun and interactive. And it doesn't always have to be cute, but it's kind of nice when it is. And I just love as you change from no to yes on this. So I decided to conduct a bit of an experiment because I kind of like doing experiments. How could I convey an emotion through simple buttons animation? So I set myself a task to have a series of buttons with various emotions and then do a few tests to see if people got the right emotion. So first of all, trying to pick what emotion was a little bit tricky. I knew I wanted some obvious ones, but I also, because maybe I'm odd, I wanted to give myself a bit of a challenge. So I decided on happy and angry, and then the challenge would be sad. So as with all good tests, I needed to set some conditions to really try and get this right. And I wanted to kind of narrow down what I was doing, because there's an awful lot you can do of animation. There's an awful lot that can cause bias in someone when they're interacting. So I decided to just use ease in and out, just use translates, and also to focus on purely just doing simple keyframes. I actually wanted to kind of get to the lowest denominator. And I also wanted to try and make the button emotionless in its design, because as we all know, people are influenced by color, shape, all these kind of other things. I wanted to try and focus on how the animation could create the design, the, the actual emotion. So I started, first of all, with happy. And as with all good searches, I started with animated GIFs. And I actually found, I'm not sure if this is a hamster or a guinea pig or a gerbil, but this small, furry, happy thing I found. And to me, this happy dance just personified, just made me feel happy as soon as I saw it. But I kind of thought I could go happier than that. So I thought about minions. 
because minions just exude. They just have such happiness. It just kind of is exploding for them as they're bouncing up and down. So I wanted to bring that into my button. So I started to think how the keyframes would look, and I did some really rough graphs. However, this was me just trying to think how it would kind of peak and trough. So I kind of thought the happy button would actually be keen to be used. If you think of the minions, they're just not kind of just grinning. They just kind of can't stop it escaping. They're bouncing. So I wanted this button to actually react on load. I imagine it would kind of be so happy it just couldn't help itself, so little happiness blips were escaping, and then when you actually interact with it, it would get even happier. So this is the happy button. It's kind of, just kind of doing a little, and then when you interact with it, it just cannot escape. So this is my version of a minions in a button. So then I went back to look at angry. And I started to think about how the angry button would appear. And I found this animated GIF, and you can see the rocks side by side of sheer anger. And I thought this would be good to reflect, particularly in relation to the minion button with the kind of up and down movement. So I went back to drawing rough graphs. Um, and I kind of thought that I wanted to attach a personality this time to this button beyond just kind of the minion. I wanted to actually make you feel that there was a kind of a grr and a violent shaking. So I actually thought it would be a little bit like poking someone awake. So it would kind of be all quiet, and then it would kind of be a grr, get off, is what I wanted this, the kind of anger, so you kind of get that feeling. And this is what I had with Angry Button. So as you interact, it kind of goes grr, get off, and it kind of gives that feedback. And then it kind of does that so sad button I knew was going to be a bit of a challenge because sadness is quite a wide range and it's quite hard to convey. And one person's sad really isn't another person's sadness. I did a bit of a search and I found this heartbreaking Pikachu. This is kind of all the sad. I can't watch it for too long because it's just too sad. However, this to me conveyed the little trembling I just, like, that's just a universal for sad. So I then thought about how that would actually look in a graph. And it's kind of quite, you can see the difference in the emotion in the graphs that I'm creating. And I thought this would kind of be a reluctant button. And I started to think of how it would almost be that sad sighing. And this would be on click, and it would be kind of reluctant. There would be this kind of time delay. Remember going back to timing, this really would come into play with, with sadness. So sad button is actually really sad. It's actually quite a slight emotion. But as you interact, it's kind of, <sighs> that's what the button does. So I then went on to test on some humans. I did five initial one-to-one -one tests because I just wanted to see whether I was crazy developing these buttons by myself or whether I was actually conveying these emotions. I used CoPen to share, and I asked a simple question of what emotion does this button feel? And I really want to do some more after this, but I wanted kind of a baseline by asking and then refining. And with that, I actually presented three emotions to the person and asked them to select them. And the reason I did this was you could get five, you know, lots of different words for the same emotion, and I wanted to really try and pin it down, at least initially. So here's the results. Happy button, got five people, which I was really pleased about. Also, the feedback I got was really interesting, considering I based it on minions, which people said it was rushed, excited, and anxious. Anxious was interesting, but anxious can actually be very close to excitable happiness. So that was kind of on the money with what it was said. And then angry button, all five people, definitely said that button was angry. And also, what was interesting relating to the kind of gur get off, people also said it was annoyed. So it kind of was giving that feeling. This is where it got a bit tricky. Sad button, all five people did say it was sad. However, people actually were saying, mm, if I have to pick one, it'll be sad. So I don't... I, 
sad button was not a success. And I knew this was going to be hard. So sad is actually something that's really difficult to convey. And the feedback was quite varied, such as it was stoned, it was sleepy, reluctant, and bored. Maybe that kind of applies to the sign, but it kind of indicates I really wasn't on, the, kind of on target for it being sad. And one of the feedbacks I actually got uh, was that happy and angry reminded them of their kid, which to me was great, considering I based it on a minion and that kind of go get off kind of childish thing. So that's a fun experiment. I like doing things like that, and I want to do more with those emotions, because to me it was really a useful experiment. But how can you actually take that into the interfaces you create? How can we take that beyond those kind of cute, angry experiments for buttons? So invisible animation can be said to be the one that creates the most profound emotions. When animation is good, you don't notice it. And a lot of the experiments I'm doing focus on smaller elements that's aligned to this. It's also about adding to the experience and causing reaction at subconscious. If you think about Monument Valley again, I keep on going back to it because it layers up to create that experience. It's what animation films do, it's what Pixar do, it's what Studio Ghibli do. They add these layers to create the whole entire experience. And that's what we can be doing with the smaller elements. So I did a couple more experiments that I'd like to just share at the end of this talk with you. And one of those is coughing buttons. So this is, I was trying to play around with how I could take a subtle emotion into a simple interface. So what's a coughing button? It's quite simply <clears throat> in the form of a button. So it's maybe a very English noise, but it's basically doing that. Um, it's not loud. It's subtle, but it's just enough to grab attention. And this is my version of a coughing button. So it's kind of just <clears throat> in the corner. Um, I want to play around with this a little bit more. It's just my first stab at coughing buttons. But it shows how you can just have a simple attention grabber. And the other thing I've started to look at is something called Zen Inputs. And this is really, really subtle. It's part of that layering and adding to different things. So how even an input could be just sat there adding to that atmosphere. Um, this input is quietly waiting. That's why it's called Zen. It's just quietly doing its own thing. And you're not meant to notice it until you interact and it stops moving. That's when you probably notice it. Don't know how this is going to convey on the big screen, but it's just ever, ever so slightly making a little bit of movement. And I almost wanted you to not notice it was moving, but kind of register it's moving. So you kind of get that feeling, but you, you don't know. So all these experiments are great and fun to do. Well, for me, they are. But a lot of them come down to feedback. This is when the user interacts and gets an emotion back. It's the same thing that we relate to robots, we get that emotional feedback back. While we relate to animals, we get that feedback as well. For example, if you click a button and you make it angry, or if you add input into a field and make it hold its breath as you do that. Feedback isn't the only way to show emotion through CSS, but it can be a really, really effective one and quite a low entry point. Humans, we seek that emotional feedback. And this is a great way that we can interact. Through CSS animation, we can bring personality to interactions. Buttons can be impatient or happy. A sliding panel might be eager to actually be opened. An input field might be impatient to have content added to it. Emotion is powerful, and we can really use it to connect to users. Emotion makes interfaces more human, and as humans, we then connect with that. Creating an interface you feel connected to is incredibly powerful. Maybe it's a grand showcase that tugs at the heartstrings, but we should be also looking at the smaller details, and I hope I've shown that today. CSS is really, really powerful, and we can bring a little bit of emotion to any aspect of the interface. So thank you so much for listening to me. I'm going to be around all day, so please come and say hi, as I love meeting new people, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.